Well, welcome to Fox News Tonight. I'm Will Kane. You know, with all the warnings about fascism, it's likely you've become familiar with the concept, if not the term, strongman. A political strongman is an authoritarian leader like Xi Jinping or Vladimir Putin or historically Pol Pot. But a political strongman is not the same thing as a strong man, a man of wisdom, courage, capability. And sadly, here in the United States, we do not have a strong man. Joe Biden has hid from political confrontation. He ran a campaign in a basement. He refuses to take questions from reporters. And then he incoherently babbles his way through his presidency. And he has set a standard for our governance. That standard, frailty, incompetence, weakness. And it is spreading like a virus. Yesterday, there was a sad moment at the United States Senate involving Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman. The Republicans want to give a, a work requirement for SNAP, you know, for a, 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 a hungry family it has to, to have these this kind of penalties or these some kinds of word working uh, required. Shouldn't you have a working requirement after we sell your bank you, with billions of your bank? Because they seem to be more pre preoccupied uh, when than SNAP uh, and requirements for works for hungry people, but not about protecting the, ta the tax papers, you know, that will bail no matter whatever does about a bank to crash it. That is so hard to watch. He's incoherent. And if we're being honest and not worried about being kind, that was one of his better moments from yesterday. That man should not be allowed to operate a power tool or drive a car, much less govern this country. But as sad as that is for Fetterman, it's more sad for the people of Pennsylvania. How did 2.5 million people vote for Fetterman? I'm going to show you, at least in part, how. A Washington Post reporter named Jeff Stein watched that same clip we just played, and he transcribed it in a tweet. It read like this, Senator John Fetterman to SVP Executive Greg Becker, shouldn't you have a working requirement after we bail out your bank? Jeff Stein laundered John Fetterman to make him sound coherent, to make him sound profound, to make him sound strong. That's modern journalism. In another moment, another eye-opening moment last week, in another moment of perhaps incoherence for this nation, 89-year-old Dianne Feinstein came back to the Senate and cast her first vote in three months. But the California Democrat didn't seem to realize that she had missed a beat or two or missed a vote or two. Despite at times being in the hospital for long extended stays and most certainly not spending time in the United States Capitol, she said, quote, no, I haven't been gone. You should, I haven't been gone. I've been working. What is going on here? Who is using these people? They're useful idiots for whom? For Jill Biden? For Giselle Fetterman? For Chuck Schumer? We here in the United States of America were once led by strong men. In America, we were led by visionaries who not only won a revolution against an empire, but had the humility to limit their own power through eternal principles enshrined in a constitution. Titans, historic titans. And globally, we were led by men who, between glasses of brandy and scotch, stared down not only a tyranny, but also weak, weaklings on their own team in order to win a world war. If you look around you, you must feel not only the sense of duty done, but also you must feel anxiety, lest you fall below the level of achievement. Opportunity is here now, clear and shining for both our countries. To reject it or ignore it or fritter it away will bring upon us all the long reproaches of the after time. Once the world had Winston Churchill, now we have Justin from Canada, who today summoned all of his virtue signaling and just fire hosed cliches into a tweet. He said, Today, you should be able to be who you are and love whom you love, free from discrimination and hate. Full stop. No ifs, ands, or buts. Full stop. Oh, Justin, the passion, the strength. Does that mean, does that include, for example, pedophilia, man-boy love? What about cousins, incest? I mean, 
love who you love, right? Full stop. No ifs, ands, or buts. At least Justin from Canada got all the letters in the ever-expanding acronym right. I think he did. Hell, I don't know. It's hard to keep up. He probably copy and pasted it because it is very hard. It changes every week. And it has been hard in particular for Justin. I will never apologize for standing up for an LGDP, uh, LGT, LBG, LGBT. LGBTQ2 plus uh, kids' rights. It's hard. You know, we once had Washington and Jefferson and Madison, and now we have Florida legislatures doing TikTok dances on the well of their legislature body. Now we have Biden. Now we have Fetterman. Now we have Feinstein. And yes, for those individuals, they are the victims of ambitious spouses. But more importantly, they are the front men. They are the Manchurian candidates for permanent Washington. The faces may change, and the more indistinguishable they are, the better. But the interests stay. The interests remain. And that's a different kind of malevolence. It's the kind of elitism that was on display, for example, in exchange yesterday at a hearing on Antifa threats between New York Congressman Dan Goldman and journalist Julio Rosas. So Rosas, apparently the expert now in organized terrorist activity, has overruled the FBI director who says, there's a headline, says Antifa is an ideology, not an organization. No, no, no. Let's not listen to the FBI director. Let's listen to, sorry, what's your, your title? Senior writer at Town Hall who is going to tell us that the FBI director is wrong. The contempt. Dan Goldman believes Julio Rosas has no authority to talk about Antifa, even though Julio has been on the ground covering that violence for years. In fact, here's what Julio Rosas has seen firsthand. Obviously, a burning building behind me, or as Ali Belshi would say, not an unruly protest. That's credibility. That's Julio Rosas. But none of that coverage matters to Dan Goldman. He says you need to believe him, even though his only credential is the fact that he's an heir to the Levi Strauss fortune and that he spent $2 million of his own family's fortune to get himself elected in one of the wealthiest congressional districts in the country. In other words, Dan Goldman is rich. And in his version of America, his opinion, because he is rich, matters more than Julio Rosas. Well, his opinion, and of course, the unimpeachable opinion of the FBI. Thankfully, Julio Rosas refused to be lectured yesterday by Goldman. I think it's funny to be, to be lectured by an heir to the Levi Strauss uh, Corporation. And, and that, honestly, that's probably why he uh, doesn't consider property damage to be that big of a deal, because not only does he have that, but he also has... Uh, what some would describe an impossibly good stock portfolio. Um, but what I can tell you is that in these riots that happened uh, three years ago, they, uh, yes, big corporations uh, did suffer damage and looting, such as Target, that, that would happen in Minneapolis. Uh, but a lot of the businesses, they were small businesses. They didn't come from multi-million dollar uh, families or, or corporations. Like Levi Strauss. So what's going on here? We most certainly do not have strong men as our leaders. But what it looks like we do have is weak men used as meat puppets for permanent Washington in order to keep that money printing press buzzing, keep the bailouts coming, to keep the cash cow of forever wars launching, to keep that good gig safe. That amalgam, that oligarchy, that's not a strong man, but that's our would-be authoritarian strong man. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.